Hey everybody, it's Gail, and this is a Rata Hate episode 70. We have made it to the end of another batch. Thank you for coming along with me. Thank you for your continued support as I've been putting these batches together and the hiatuses have had to get longer because of other stuff happening. Um, the, hi the hiatuses, hiatuses, I don't know. Uh, they're going to stay longer because I am, you know, still working a full-time job. I can't devote as much time to the channel, but I really appreciate um, people letting me know that they're good with it. They're excited when new stuff comes out, so appreciate you. So to finish this batch, I decided we were going to make a poncho. And I decided that because I went and bought a giant pile of blanket yarn, like the Bernay blanket. So Bernay blanket. Um to make a blanket from a pattern that I hope will get to hopefully be reviewing next batch. Uh, and then I was looking at it and I have a poncho that I bought that's just like a lightweight, you know, run around, you know, around the house need an extra layer poncho that I really like. Um, and I'm like, man, it would be so great to make this in like a nice warm yarn. And then I bought all this blanket yarn and rather than doing what I plan to do with it, I'm doing this, which is a story I think we all know. Um, so this poncho, uh, the two big things about it, one, there's going to be a nice cozy cowl piece at the top, uh, two, it is not going to be one uniform length all the way down. Um, I prefer my ponchos with kind of where they, they hit me, you know, right at the elbow and my arms have a little more free movement. So that's what we're doing. We're doing that. And I'll show you how to measure that in a minute. Um, but then three, uh, so in episode 68, uh, I showed you how to do post stitches. And then in 69, I showed you a basic cable pattern. Um, and so I'm actually putting, I'm going to be putting cables on to my poncho. And then, um, and you can do the same. I've, I've linked the pattern down in the basement for you if you want to use those cables. Um, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just doing two cables up the front. Uh, and this is going to be a rectangular build because ponchos are basically, they're either circles or rectangles. I'm going rectangle. Uh, we've done rectangular builds before. We did, uh, episode 14, episode 15 was the rectangle sweater revenge with bulky yarn. Uh, episode 26 was a rectangle sweater for the pining sweater. And, uh, episode 9 was the failure. Uh, but if you have not seen that one, it still makes me laugh a little bit because the whole thing just went off the rails. Um, and in episode nine, at the end of it, I've, I've got a big rant about yarn labels lying to me, which is very important here because Bernay thinks this is an L. They think this super bulky yarn needs an L hook. They're full of shit. All right. We pulled out the P hook. Okay. I'm just... If you want to try with an L and you're comfortable with an L, that's fine. But I just, I knew there was no way I was going to be able to work with an L and not lose my mind. Um, I've done a little bit of work so far so I can show you. I mean, this is, you know, these stitches are nice and, and, and cozy together. There's no big gaps between them or anything. But an L hook on a super bulky, get out of my house. Just off you go. Um, so that mini rant over let's talk about how to measure for this so what i'm going to be doing is i'm working the front piece first we're going to put a neck hole in we're going to work the back piece and then we're going to put the collar on so the thing i need to know right now is how wide is my rectangle going to be um i like i said i prefer that my ponchos hit me right at the elbow so right about here i'm just going to bend my arm to hold that up and then we're going to come across to the midpoint here, which is about 13 and a half. And I can just double that. So that's going to be 27. Yeah, 13 and a half, 27. Um, and so I need to make a rectangle that's 27 inches across so that when I put it on and it drapes down, it's going to hit me at the elbows. So uh, you can also, you know, there's always the tried and true, just make a chain from the one spot, you know, from the spot you, you want it to start and the spot you want it to end. We all know I am not a precise measuring type of person. Um, so I'm going to, I've done that. I can show you. Um, whoop, come here. Yeah, so I have, 
This actually is a little bit longer than that because I am I'm also adjusting for boobs. Um, but you know I knew 27 was the start, and then when I was kind of laying it against myself, I remembered you know things are going to get wider, a little lower down. Uh, so this is working. I'm doing this as a as a bottom up because it is a rectangle pattern, and I have my cables started. I just started them. Uh, there you go. You can kind of see them. It's a very light yarn. It's a very light pink I'm working with. Um, and what I did was I just started the first one five stitches from the end and then picked it up uh, 13 stitches from the end because that's how much space I needed. And like I said, the pattern for this cable is linked down in the basement so you have it. It is a graph and some written instructions. Um, and so I'm going to go and just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm doing this in a double crochet. Very simple. Uh, you know, and this is, I think, a really great option, a, a really great way to play around with a stitch pattern that maybe you, you want to see how it looks, but you don't want to devote a whole project to it. You know, you can do, you can do it. So, you know, you, you have vertical stripes, so you can do a horizontal stripe at the bottom or, you know, have fun with it. So I'm going to go get the first half of this done so that it is as long as I want. It is as long as I want on the front and then I will be back to put the neck on because I think I want the neck. I, I don't want a, a perfectly square neck on it. I want it a little rounder. So we're going to make that adjustment and then work our way down. Uh, so I will be back to do that in a bit. So I will see you soon. Hey everybody, I am back. I have the front of the poncho finished. Uh, I realized as I was working on it, I forgot to tell you guys how to measure for it. Um, so I'm going to show you that real quick. It's pretty easy. Ah. Uh, things are a bit disheveled. We're moving. Um, there we go. Out of the way now. Okay. So the way I'm picturing this is that the neckline is going to come about here and then the cow will go on after. But the way you want to measure is just take it from right about the top notch of your collarbone and you're measured down to whatever length you would like. So let me, oh right, I, I packed my tape measure. That was a dumb idea. Uh, but you get the sense of what I'm talking about. So lay it flat here, go all the way down, and then that can give you um, the measurement you want and you can decide how long you want it. This is gonna hit me actually, uh, let me get it right side up, there we go. So. If it's here, which is the goal, kind of right at the top of the collarbones, it's gonna hit me a couple inches above the knee and there'll still be space for this to stretch because the cables are causing a little bit of a rocking, but I'm planning to uh, finish making it, uh, drench it, and then um, drop, it, drop it on a hanger to stretch out the rest of the way, so I'm not concerned. Um, so the next step is going to be to figure out where the neck is needs to go. And rather than counting out left, you know, from one side to the other and then doing division, I'm going to cheat because it's a big rectangle. So we're just going to fold it in half. And I'm going to make sure the ends are touching. All right, there we go. It is now folded in half. And that means I can come down here to the fold and know where my center stitch is. And it's, it's one of these two here. And so I'm just going to go ahead and pick this one. Uh, you know, if you're off by a single stitch on something this wide, nobody's going to notice. Uh, and now that that is in place, I'm going to center it on my collarbone, like just right in your notch there. And looking at it, I'm going to count out from either side to figure out where I want the uh, the neck hole to go. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, and then one, two, let's see, one, two, three, four. You know what, just to be safe, just to make sure I can get my head in, I'm going to go out five on either side. So it's going to be a neck hole with uh, 10 chain stitches. So I'm going to come to the stitch next to my first stitch, chain 10, skip 10, put another, uh, come over here and 
join again and just work straight across. I will continue to work my cable pattern for a few more rows. I'm not going to do them all the way down the back because uh, I'd like to know which is the front and back of my poncho. But um, I can, I, I want to make sure that they go all the way up to the bend of my shoulder so it looks like they, so it, I can trick people into thinking they go all the way back. Uh, so I'm going to go start on the neckline and I will come back and show you my process for putting that together. I know you can figure it out from what I said, but I always like to show. Also, I might be wrong on the sizing and might as well do that on camera if I'm wrong. So I will be back. Alrighty, so I am to that first set of stitches that I'm going to skip. And I realized uh, when I was counting and I said five on this side and five on this side, and I said I'm going to uh, chain 10. I'm actually going to chain 11 because, you know, this one, kind of a big one. Uh, so I'm going to chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to count over uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Get my yarn wound up here. And I'm going to double crochet into the stitch after that. And that should make my neck hole. Now let me do a couple of other stitches here just to hold it in place. Because the next step is to make sure it actually fits over my head. Uh, this is always the fun part. All right, pull that up. So it's not a huge hole, but it can strip. No, it's too small. Definitely too small. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and you know what, let's go, uh, given how snug it was, because it wasn't coming down off the crown of my head, uh, I am going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna go out seven on each side and that will give me 15 stitches. So that'll give me a little more room. We'll see how that works. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Coming over here, 15 gallons, both sides. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, and so we can come here because we know this is stitch number eight. And nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we're gonna come to the stitch after that and do a double crochet and check the size on this again. Uh, so, you know, I, I know there are measurements and things I could be doing, but uh, this is more fun. All right, so pull that through to hold it. And let's see if we can get it over my head this time. Oh, hey, we can. All right, that's nice. And you can kind of get a sense of how it's going to look when it's all, uh, when it's shaped out a little bit. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect by any means just yet. We got to put the neckline back, you know, we got to finish the neckline and all that, but you can get a sense of how it's looking so far. So my next step uh, will be to, well, first of all, get this off. Um, you finish working this row and just keep working back and forth again, keeping my, uh, my cables going. And I am, I'm probably going to do, I think I'm going to do five rows with this being the first row. So four more rows after this one, uh, of working back and forth, putting the cable, still doing the cables. Uh, kind of get it on again so that the weight on the back can start showing me uh, where my cables can end, like where they're going to hit the top of my shoulder. And uh, in these chain stitches, I'm just going to work a double crochet in each chain stitch. Uh, you can also just work um, however many chains you had to make to fit your head through. You can work that many double crochet just over the chain as well. So just not going into the individual stitches, but just going straight across. I don't do it that way because I always end up with it rubbing my neck weird. So I always go into the chain stitch itself, but that's really up to you, whatever you're most comfortable with. So I'm going to go get back to work and I will be back with news. 
Okay, so this is gonna be a handheld one, so bear with me with a bit of shaky cam, if you will. Um, I did my five rows, and I put this back on, and it is hitting me exactly where I want it to, so right at the top of my collarbones, where I was hoping. There's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of give up here, but since there's gonna be a cowl on top of it, I'm not worried about it. Uh, the one thing I, so I like a lot of things about working with this yarn, actually, it's been quite lovely, uh, but I really like working with Super Bulkies because when you need to kind of do a fit check on something in terms of, you know, is the weight on the back going to put it where I want it, uh, the fact you only have to do five rows is pretty sweet. Uh, and after so many finger and weight projects, uh, I like it. It was a thumbs up, but it was down here. Uh, the other thing is that I had this whole thing about, oh, I can stop making the cables because in my head, I was like, the cables are on the shoulders, even though I know they're not. They're down near the end of the arms. There they are. Um, so they have to keep going, which is not a big deal. Uh, you know, it's a simple cable pattern, cable pattern so it's, it's fairly quick. But, like, that is, like, Gail's lack of spatial awareness 101, because I'm making a rectangle something. I'm like, it'll be on my shoulders. Uh, but I'm going to go finish the back of this. And when I come back, we will get to work on the neck piece. Also, I can already tell this is going to be super cozy and I'm so excited. Hey everybody, I am back. And you might notice that this is a slightly different wall than what you're used to seeing behind me. Uh, we moved over the weekend and I now have an office. It's very exciting. Uh, that did not mean I stopped stitching though. So I got the body of the poncho done, and so what I want to do now is work on that cowl neck. And I think I said earlier in the video that I was going to keep the cables going for the cowl, and I'm not going to do that. Um, because I don't want to. So I have made that executive decision. So what I need to do to get this neck on is I'm lying the collar flat so it's, um... So it's folded on each other properly, and then I'm going to just grab the middle-ish stitch here. I'm going to work my hook through there, and I'm going to retrieve my yarn, which fell on the floor. And I'm going to do a join. So I'm going to, you know, do the usual, bring it in. And then what I'm actually going to do to start is a series of, I'm just going to work single crochets around first so I have a good solid base to work on the collar because uh, as you'll recall the you know one half of the collar was just skipping over stitches and the other half was that series of chains we did and so it's just to help make sure that everything has a little bit of reinforcement that things will keep their shape um, and since this is going to be I'm going for like a big cowl sort of uh, folded over collar so you know if you're somebody who prefers that everything kind of look uh, exactly the same all the way around um, it should because that part of the collar the the single crochet part will be uh, will be tucked away underneath the shape of the collar itself so I'm just working um, and I will not be joining uh, at the end of this round. Well, I guess it's a row because I'm not joining. Uh, I will not be joining at the end of it uh, because I want to make sure my seam is nice and straight and I can, I have issues sometimes when I'm working in circles and keeping my circular seam straight. So um, what I will be doing is making basically a big floppy bit and then stitching up the side of it much like I did on the circle jacket that we did earlier in this batch. Um, and then I've done on some other stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Ooh. a lot of dust we kicked up. We're a dusty, dusty house. So I'm almost done here, just finishing up my single crochets. Um, and if you're wondering, yes, this does get a little weighty because we are using super bulky yarn. Um, but I put this on the other day just to make sure it was looking good, you know, once I had hit the end of the skein I was on was that kind of because uh, it was two skeins for the front and then two skeins for the back and it is so warm um 
And so it's it's the super gross part of the winter here in the Pacific Northwest with a lot of rain and everything. So like just a super warm, cozy poncho is uh, exactly what I want. Although this is episode 69, which means you'll be seeing it in like April. So um, maybe not so great for April, but you know, you can use the same, these same instructions to make a poncho with a lighter weight yarn that can get you through the spring and the summer. Um, you know, depending on where you live and if it cools down in the evenings. All right, so that is the end of the row. So what I want to do to help get this shape, to get kind of this big turnover shape, is I want to do increases. So I'm going to work two stitches because I'm going to work a double crochet so it matches the rest of the poncho. And um, at these points where things are, where the edges match up, that's where I'm going to put my increases. Uh, and I'm going to just do, uh, let's see, what, there we go. So I'm working double crochets across, and I'm actually going to be working raglan increases, which I've done a lot before, but if you're new, uh, raglan increases, what you do is you put three stitches into a single stitch, uh, so you make a little triangle, and then you, um, and then every time around you work that single stitch back into, uh, you work, uh, you work three more stitches into the middle of that, that first, uh, three stitches you did. And what just happened here is that part of my yarn broke off. Uh, this is something I've had happen with chenilles before, just the nature of the yarn. It's not a difficult fix. A little annoying, though. A little bit annoying. Uh, so I'm just going to join that back up. And, all right. And just pick it up and keep going. There we go. The good news is it's all the same color. So, you know, pretty easy. All right, so I'm coming up to that point where if I, if I hold it up, I can see those two corners. And so right here, you know, the corners are, yeah, let me get it turned here, are these two stitches. And so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to put the increase in, not this stitch, but this stitch. I'm gonna skip this other stitch, and then I'm gonna do the increase in the following stitch. Um, and what that's going to do is, um, just help keep those increases from getting too bunched up. Okay, so that's okay. So here we go. Right here, we're going to work three double crochets. Going to make that raggle increase. One. Two. Three. So there's that raggle increase. And I'm going to work one in the next one, in the next stitch, just working a regular stitch. And then I'm going to work that other regular increase. So one, two, three. And now that that's done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the number of stitches I have in terms of what was on the bottom row, well, the first row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the first increase, but this is eight, nine, ten. And so what I'm going to do is come over here. Woo. And starting from this stitch, count over ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I am, I don't know where my stitch markers are. Well, anyway, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark it with my finger because this yarn is big enough that I can mark on the other side of things and uh, still be able to finish. So that increases in. So I'm just going to work double crochets across to that other, uh, that other tenth stitch that I counted out. And that is where we're going to start the increases on the other side so that they are evenly spaced. Um, and you will have matching sides. You know, you won't have one side that maybe gets a little lopsided. So, go ahead and do that. 
Um, now, of course, the thing is, because we're working with the super bulky yarn on a P hook, it's not going to take a lot of increases to get that big neck. Um, and especially when we're putting our increases so close together. So what I'm going to do after I get this part done, and I actually did drop my pinky out of that one I was holding. So real quick again, because I know I'm coming up to it. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I am one, two, three, four, five. So I'm six stitches from the stitch that I need. So we are gonna do six more double crochets before we do that next increase. So one, and I'll finish my thought in a second. I'm a little scattered, guys. Uh, two. Three, lift, four, five, and there we go, and six. All right, so we're going to do that raglan increase again. So three double crochets into the next stitch. That's one, that's two, and there's three. Going to work a single double crochet in the following stitch. Just did that. And then three double crochets in the stitch after that to do another raglan increase and then work even to the end of the row. Uh, so as I was saying, when you're working with a super bulky yarn and a P hook, um, increases are gonna build very quickly. So what I am going to do is I am going to do a little experiment and I'm going to do uh, four more rows of increases, just working them one on top of each other, putting the next increase in the middle stitch of the previous increase, uh, like I was talking about. And I'm going to evaluate from there how things are looking because um, could be I have, you know, exactly the amount of neck I want, might have a little too much, but after that, if I can get the increases where I want, I can just work even for the last few rows and make it a nice simple ending. Uh, but we will go see what we can see and I will be back to report. Back yet again, uh, I have worked those five rows with those increases like I talked about. And I like where this is hitting in terms of its width. And so I am going to stop doing increases. Now, however, because I was sort of checking the height of it once I would seam it just by holding the back up. Um, and it'll get pretty tall. You know, it's not going to go up perfectly, of course, because it is a big floppy bit. But um, it's so close, really, to, to being a hood in the back. I mean, I'm at about the halfway point that in another five rows, I should be able to just kind of pick up the part that I want over my head and toss it. So I'm going to go for another five rows, just working even, like I said. Um, and then I will be back to show you how to do the seaming. It's going to be very similar to uh, the seaming I did for the circle yoke sweater. So if you did that tutorial, you'll know what we're doing on this one. But if you didn't, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through it. Not a big deal. So I'll see you guys in a few. All right, I am here. I did those other five rows that I talked about uh, and then I fastened off. I What I'm doing is sort of seaming like this where I have it joined at a particular place, I like to start the seaming down at the bottom uh, just to make sure that everything stays lined up well. Uh, I sometimes end up with a bubble at the bottom if I start at the top. So I fastened off. I have... Let me do this. There we go. There's my loop. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to come into this loop where those single crochets were put in. So we're going to start down there. We're going to put our yarn on and then we are going to pull through and we are going to chain one and then we're going to come up to this next part and we are going to, so I've got the hook through the first side and now I'm going to get the hook through to the, to the other side at the same height and I'm going to pull through and I'm going to slip stitch. And you can do this with the slip stitch or you can do it with a single crochet, whichever one is fine. Um, but now we're getting up, you know, this is the double crochet. 
And so how we're going to do these, and this is how I like to do my double crochets, because you need two stitches per double crochet in a seam so that the seam stays even and you don't get any rippling or anything. So this is the double crochet, and so I'm going to go ahead and do a single, do a slip stitch in there. And now you can slip stitch twice into the double crochet. What I prefer to do is actually come over to this little uh, sort of between the row spot that sticks out and pick it up there because then it sort of spaces them a little bit differently and I've, oh, I found that it makes them a little smoother. So I'm going to pull my loop through, going to do that slip stitch, going to come to the next double crochet, you know, work that through both, slip stitch, come up to the next, uh, the next hole, if I can find it, there it is. Um, and slip stitch. And so I'm just going to keep moving up the, up the side here like I was telling you about. And then at the end of this, I'll be able to just throw this on and let you know how it fits. So, uh, something to keep in mind is I am working on, I am working on this seam on the, uh, wrong side. So I'm seaming on what is going to be the inside of the poncho. Uh, so that the seam itself will be nice and smooth on the outside and if I if I have any weird hiccups in my seam in terms of how the stitches look you won't be able to see them. It's a very handy thing to be able to hide your stitches. Um, so as you can see as I'm coming up I am coming up even so this is spaced out well um, it's gonna be nice and flat it's gonna look good um, my only concern right now is actually flipping this thing over and putting it back to rights to try it on because it is pretty heavy, uh, cause it's super, it's about four and a half skeins of super bulky yarn, which, um, not a lightweight thing. So, you know, it's a little, it's a little weird to manhandle, but I really do like it. I, I really have enjoyed working with this color, especially. I don't do a lot of pastels, um, but working with this color and then it's a very soft yarn to work with, this Brene blanket. Um, it is only available at Joann's, I realized. There was a big sticker I didn't notice before on the label. Uh, the other thing is that it is, it's, it's pricey. It's, it's $11 a skein if you can't get it on sale and that's, that's quite a bit. So full price I would have paid $55 which you know the thing we always kind of tell ourselves is well it'll cost that much to buy it and that's true but uh, we don't have to make it when we buy it finished and your time should be valuable to you and I mean you know what I mean like the amount of time you spend on something should definitely be considered when you're looking at the price of things but also $11 for a skein of yarn isn't uh, something that everyone can do let alone $55 for a single project. So I do encourage you, you know, you just need a super bulky yarn. You need uh, a weight of six and you need a P-hook and you can kind of shop around and find one that maybe will be a little nicer to your bu budget. Uh, or if you're like me, you'll shop around meaning to do that and then fall in love with something that's more expensive. Uh, yeah, I've had that problem a lot. So I just finished the neck. Gonna get it turned in inside right, all right, and I don't, so you can see my seam a little bit. It's right there. And then on the other side, it's really standing out because that's the side we seamed on. Um, so let me just try to wiggle into this thing. Uh, all right, over the head, around the glasses. Right. So far, so good. Let me take a step back so you can kind of get a better look. Woohoo, that turned out nice. All right, I'm happy. Always a good thing. All right, so here is our finished poncho. Surprising no one, my sleeves ended up a little long. That's just, it happens. Um, you can see the cabling, it's coming out, it's showing up real nice. That's very pretty. Um, and I've got the drape that I want, if you can see it, where it kind of bells where my arms are and then it's flat otherwise. It's kind of, I can't really back up much more, I'm about to hit the other wall. Uh, but I really like how this cowl ended up, especially because when you have a big cowl, you can sort of, you know, bunch it up all around you and, but also, let's see. <gasps> Yay, I have a hood. There we go. Uh, I might add an 
another row or two to the edge of it. It is it is slipping a little, but my hair is also very tall right now. So who knows? Anyway, um, there we go. We did it. We made a poncho. Proud of you guys. Uh, so this is the final episode for batch seven? Six? For the batch. It is batch seven. Uh, so this is the end of the episode for batch seven. This doesn't seem right. No, it is. Okay, yeah. I'm really bad about that. Um, so, you know, now it's it's time for hiatus. Uh, everybody take a break. Stretch your hands. Uh, I will see you for batch eight. When I see you for batch eight, there will be the, u the now usual hiatus updates. Uh, so you know when that's going to happen. Um, and... As always, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, please like, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, you know, feel free to show me pictures when you make my stuff. That's always a fun one. I like that a lot. Uh, so I am going to go and cozy down on the couch with this thing. And I will see you guys later.